welcome to Chamber Connection. I'm Mary Hodson, president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Hutchinson, Minnesota. And with me today, since I'm not really sure which camera to look at these days, um, I, am, I have asked C.G. Wassman from our office to come in and join me. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to everybody, C.G. C.G. everybody. I know, you're super excited, mm -hmm. aren't you? Mm-hmm. Very much so. I thought so. Um, so I thought it would be a great opportunity for us um, in the month of March to talk about arts and crafts because I, that's a big part of what we're doing right now. Yes, and I also very much so love arts and crafts. It kind of hits home for me. Yes, you yourself are a crafter. Absolutely. As well as a phenomenal chamber employee. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so let's um, share with everybody a little bit about arts and crafts because it's going to look different this year. Uh, we have Main Street 2020, mm -hmm. which is the construction project that's going from, um, for everybody's um, sense of direction, basically from in front of Wells Fargo and Gateway mm -hmm. Park down to Fifth Avenue, mm -hmm. that one. Um, I always tell people, it's where most people turn for 3M. Yes, that's what yeah. I tell people all the time. So um, that's that construction project. That's going to be happening in conjunction with arts and crafts. Last year, how many people did we have visiting? About like twelve thousand people. Yeah, that we count. I mean, can you imagine if trying to navigate through a dangerous twenty-foot holes? No. Yeah, right. Um, and so the parking situation, the driving situation, we worked with the city and the police department and we really said a few years ago, this would not be a good situation for us. Mm -hmm. And so we made a decision, the board made a decision quite some time ago to actually move to the McLeod County Fairgrounds. So we have the whole fairgrounds. Yes, yes. And so that lends itself to some opportunity. Huge growth potential. Right? So we have our typical arts and crafts mm -hmm. festival, mm -hmm. but tell us what's being added. So this year we are adding open market. So open market is maybe you sell, you buy product from somebody else and then you resell it. Maybe you do um, antiques or maybe you do a pampered chef. You do origami owl, any, any of those things. Um, we want you to come in and sell and enjoy this new experience with us. Yeah, super excited because we have all the space yeah. of the fairgrounds to do this. So we'll be inside and outside with mm -hmm. vendors. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about um, what that looks like for somebody who maybe is just hearing for the first time that there's going to be other vendors there. Um, because we're hoping that maybe you all know somebody who hasn't really fit the arts and crafts definition that we have or the requirements that we have, mm -hmm. but maybe they can meet some other requirements and be part of our show. Yeah. So we have our usual arts and crafts festival happening, mm -hmm. um, but on top of that, we have the open market. Mm -hmm. And I really want to kind of just dive into that criteria a little bit more um, because arts and crafts is people who have made something specifically or taken an object and manipulated it, changed it, enhanced it in some way. Mm -hmm. um, but open market's so different, mm -hmm. but yet not. So let's just talk that through a little bit. So open market, you can consider it as you have an item and you've maybe slightly changed, changed it, or maybe you just painted it like a, a antique. You've bought that antique, it's a dresser, and now maybe you washed it so it's a little bit washed look with the paint uh, maybe or bought the antique and you're just reselling the antique yep absolutely right? yep buy and sell if you want to say but um, just things like that um, so seriously it's just about being able to bring more product mm -hmm. and more purchasing opportunity yes. to the to the show itself mm -hmm. but not intermingling those two Correct. We're going to keep them very separate. They're going to be on separate sides of the fairgrounds um, with the food vendors in the middle, um, just so we keep them very separate. That's right. Taste of Hutchinson yeah. is going to be there with us as well. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I was there last year, but it was also my first week of working at the chamber. That's so. right. So you don't remember it. It was much a, anything. No, it was a little crazy. I'm not going to lie. 
<laughs> um, but can you tell me, like, do you know ahead of time how many vendors there are for food? Is there beverages, or do you just let the vendors come on in? Uh, yeah, no. Vendors cannot just come in. So vendors sign up with the ambassadors. The ambassadors are the host of Taste of Hutchinson. And they uh, work really hard, actually, to make sure that there's a wide variety of food. And then we good. don't have duplicates. Oh. Yeah, so you're not going to see two brisket sandwiches. You're not going to see two types of tacos. You're going to see the taco pie every time. Well, we always hope, but every time. There's only going to be one caramel or the kettle corn. You know, you're not going to have multiples of that. So they work really hard to make sure that that's happening. So there's a nice variety. And it's also a little bit of a balance because you don't want to have too many food vendors. Yeah, because the vendors don't make their profit that they're hoping to make. Them. Right, exactly. And they do pay to get in. So that does make a difference for them. Um, and then on top of that, we have the beverage vendors. So we added beverage vendors a couple of years ago. I think this might be our fourth year with be adult beverages available. Oh, good, good. Yeah, um, people do like to relax with a beverage. Um, and so imagine being out at the fairgrounds under the pavilion with live music, because yeah. they'll have the live music and a beverage and some great food and a great, I think we're gonna have a great ambiance there. Is there gonna be anything new added this year other than live music for people can just sit around and hang out? Oh gosh, okay. So now we're going to get into the, re you want to get in. I want to get in. You want to get in. Okay. So um, we are so excited because it just lends itself to opportunity being out there. It does. It does. Inside and, and out. If you're going to have all of this space and vendors inside and out, you might as well have a little bit of fun and try a few things. So we're going to try, we're going to try some stuff. We're going to see what happens. So we're going to have some classes. We're going to have some demonstrations. Hmm. Um, I can't. We can't say yet because we got to get it finalized, but we have some great artists coming in. They're going to be able to mm. showcase some really great technique and talent. Like some of the talent coming that we think we have coming is really good. Um, some of it's homegrown, which makes me super excited because I want to have a new hashtag that's like local art or, mm, you yeah. know, you know, native artists or something like that, that we can really um, showcase some of their work. So classes, demonstrations, um, I think that we're gonna have some some opportunities for you to get henna, ah. uh, get your hair all done up and sprayed and things like that. But I think one of the things that, that as a committee we really worked on and really talked about was making it an experience for everybody. Right. Is there anything that, or is there going to be different activities on Friday versus Saturday so people are encouraged to come back both days? Yeah, so we're going to have different things happening on Friday and Saturday just simply because of people's schedule. Oh. So obviously we'll have different music. Um, but also one of the things that I didn't mention is that we're working on the lounge. And the lounge is for anybody to go in and just kick back and relax. And mm -hmm. so maybe you're with somebody who's an avid shopper and you're not. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, you, mm -hmm. that might not be your jam, or you just want to put your feet up and rest for a little bit. So we're working on what the lounge could look like. Um, and there's a lot of things still that, um, as you know, are still kind of like in the works, like we want to have something, but we haven't confirmed it yet. Very true. Like we have these great visions, and so we just need them to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. um, and that hasn't happened for everything yet. I mean, we got a couple of months yet, right? We do. We do. Right? I hope. Because uh, there's nothing else going on this year. You know, we have, you know, <laughs> nothing going on. What else do we have? Year. This it, Arts and crafts was the first thing I started. But every, right? all the new events are new now. So tell me about what is yeah. coming up. So uh, besides the Main Street 2020 that we're going to be very actively involved in supporting the businesses and educating people on that. Um, and I think that people will be able to watch the show quite a bit this summer and to learn a lot about what's happening on there. But you haven't been through Dairy Day yet? No, I've taken my kids and eaten the $5 lunch, but I have not actually attended the whole thing or even helped plan. Yeah, so Dairy Day is like our unofficial official first day of summer. It's oh. the start of summer in Hutchinson. And so unfortunately, because of the road work, we'll be at the McLeod County Fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, not that it's bad to be at the fairgrounds, but we won't be downtown. Correct. Across the street from our work, which makes it really easy for us <laughs> to manage, right? Um, but uh, 900 people usually were serving cheeseburgers. Wow, 900. Right? 
and there's like probably a thousand people in the park usually. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, right? There's cow milking, um, um, so we, froyo. the froyo eating contest. So those things are all like great fun things to do. It'll be on the first Friday of June. So it's always the first Friday of June. So if you're watching for more details on that, Princess K will be here. It'll be a great time. Um, and honestly, we won't be probably dealing with all of the COVID-19 that we are right now. And so it'll be a great time for people just to get out and enjoy each other's company. Uh, the other thing you've not been through yet is the golf tournament. Yes, tell me more. Where is it? So the golf tournament swaps back and forth every year from Oakdale to Crow River Golf Club. And so we'll be at the Crow this year. It's a great day and we always have phenomenal weather. Aww. Knock on wood. Um, but we always have great weather. So July 27th, um, and it's really important for us to have this golf tournament as well as arts and crafts uh, because they're fundraisers for us. Yeah. Uh, all of the dollars that come in for the chamber do not all just come from membership, about 50%. And so we're fundraising for that other 50% throughout the year. And these are our larger events that we can do that with. And that's how we literally pay salary. So it's important to both of us yeah. that we have a great uh, golf tournament. Uh, we have a theme every year, and so teams can can dress up, they can decorate their cart, um, and just have fun. I mean, it's really about fun. It's not about how well you play the golf game. Last year, we had a team of four women. One hadn't golfed in like 20 years. She just admitted to us last week, and the other three people <laughs> did not play golf at all, ever. So if I've never played, I am more than welcome to come. Yes. I've never held a golf club, and well, I'm still welcome. We're still going to let you come. Are there other activities to do besides golf? So we're working on what that can look like because oh. so many people hear about how fun the golf is, but they really don't want to play golf or they mm -hmm. don't know how to play golf. So we're mm -hmm. working on how can we incorporate that. Uh, but it's a super day, and uh, the theme this year. Do you have it? Of course it is. Construction themed. So, Perfect. <laughs> I know, right? Drivers and detours. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. I mean, the construction is a really serious thing, but on occasion, you just got to have a little bit of fun with it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's going to be all out orange. It's going to be all out construction. Um, maybe we'll get, if the guys are up to speed and they're ahead of schedule, maybe they can come out and join us for a round of golf. And that would oh, be fun. That would be um, very fun. That would be um a great day so yeah if you know people who golf or you yourself golf want to put together a team we'd love that mm -hmm. and of course explorehutchinson.com is always the way to get information or give us a call at 587-5252 so those are two big things that are coming up that you've not seen yet no and of course all open to the public open to the public yep Dairy Day is one of the premier events that the agriculture, the agribusiness committee does. Mm -hmm. um, and they're such a great group of people. Um, they really are so supportive of our producers and they work really hard on Dairy Day. And that is completely 100% open to the public. And so awesome. we love it when the daycares come oh. and bring the little kids and they get to pet the baby cows. The there is nothing sweeter than watching those kids interact with a calf. Okay. And then fill their face full of ice cream yes. for the eating content. And we have hand sanitizer stations, hand <laughs> washing stations. But yeah, it's super fun to do that. And then um, the Froyo eating contest, we have prizes for that. And the kids love that. Oh, you do? Prizes? It, yeah, prizes. Very so, each year? So they um, usually are Froyo gift card. Oh, perfect. So you can go to Below Zero, which I know is one of your favorite places. It sure is. I'm ready for opening day. Yeah. April 3rd? April 3rd. Yeah. I'm so excited. It's Friday. You got to start on a Friday, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the 3rd. And we're, we're going to go. And we're going to go. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to figure out where we are that day. You may find us at Below Zero. <laughs> we'll be at the corner bistro <laughs> table outside in the sunshine. That's where we will be. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, always something really exciting. The summertime just Hutchinson just blooms. We have so much going on all the time, mm -hmm. but in the summer, um, so many more people are more comfortable to be outside, and it's just a great way to see the community and experience the community. So I'm really excited for you to see all that. Me too. I'm excited yeah. to experience and help plan. 
Yeah, so now let's just segue a little bit to something that's a little bit more serious right now and probably more timely um, than all these fun things that are coming up. But I think that it's really important for us to address the current COVID-19 mm -hmm. situation. So um, I'm just gonna jump in and tell you all um, just a little bit of what we know and some options for you as well. Number one, please wash your hands. I don't know why we're running out of toilet paper, but I know you should wash your hands. Um, we're working on less hysteria, more education. And that's really important for people to know. If you have a fever, if you have a cough, stay home. There's nothing that you can do for our community more than staying home if you do not feel well. There's a lot of people who right now are like, oh yeah, the coronavirus. And I saw it somewhere today where it said, just because you'll make it through coronavirus doesn't mean I'll make it through coronavirus. And if you carry it and somebody else gets it who has a depressed immune system, mm -hmm. that really can be deadly. Absolutely. Um, I, my suggestion to everyone, I've been putting out communication to our chamber members, uh, working with the Minnesota Chamber, working with the Department of Health and the CDC. Go to the CDC website, cdc.org. It, it's really good information. It might be cdc.gov. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong on that. Um, but they have really good information, super easy printables, but it's about washing your hands, <laughs> covering your cough, cleaning surfaces on a regular basis, using common sense. Um, common sense does not tell us to rush out and buy as much toilet paper as we need. And what's, what is funny is that nobody knows where that's coming from. I mean, it's, we just don't know, right? And here's the other thing. Toilet paper shows up on a truck at least twice a week at every store <laughs> that we have in town. So it's not like we're gonna literally run out of toilet paper. Um, but those are things that are really important. And um, I know that the city of Hutchinson, the county, the state, they're all watching the numbers. They're, they're watching things very closely. If mm -hmm. it comes to a point that we need to stop gathering in large groups, they're gonna, they're gonna help us make a decision on what a large group is because yeah. that's really defined differently by different people. Absolutely. So, um, for tonight, we have business after hours. So yep. that's still gonna happen. Uh, there are other things and other choices that we'll be making in the future, uh, like with our leadership group, that might be a little bit different than that. But always, if you're not comfortable, if you have a depressed immune system, if you are over a certain age, just simply because it's harder for you to recover, or you have a, um, a health, underlying health issue, please stay home. Mm -hmm. And if you know people like that, please check in on them. Absolutely. Um, please make sure that your neighbors are okay. This is the opportunity. Um, as Bo Young says, it's an opportunity to be kind. Mm -hmm. I would like to remind people to just to extend a little bit more grace. Businesses are working really hard to um, manage whether it's inventory or loss of sales, loss of revenue. Uh, our healthcare providers are trying to keep their staffs healthy. They're, they're putting some, some limitations on who can visit mm -hmm. to keep people safe. Um, I don't look at this as hysteria. I look at this as precautions to keep it from getting to the point that we would be in a hysterical situation. And so calm, cool heads should prevail. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a reason that so many of the sporting events that are very large are um, are just saying, you know what, we're just not going to have these right now because it's so many people in one space. And we just want people to be healthy and make good choices. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, I want to thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Mary, for inviting me. Yeah, she's just saying that because she was super excited to be here today. She was jumping up and down, weren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. I was not bribed with lunch. <laughs> she wasn't bribed with lunch. All right, so if you have any questions for us, whether it's about events, whether it's about education, if it's more information about how businesses can react and respond to be prepared for COVID-19 or any other your community needs, you can check us out at explorehutchinson.com or give us a call at 587-5252. There is much in Hutch, but maybe hopefully we can keep lesser germs in Hutch. Yes. I'm just saying. <laughs>
I'm just, I, you know, I gotta have a hashtag somewhere. You gotta figure that. that out. I gotta figure that out. Thanks for joining us and I hope to see you again next month. Thank you.